Hey there. Um, I wanted to do a little bit today on the difference between a vital and a functional person. Uh, I believe that this can relate to many different areas of our life. Um, a vital or most, most times you think of vital and functional being in a business sense. Um, so you have your vital people and your functional people, but I really wanted to relate this not only to business, but also back to relationships, um, with our lovers as well. Those of you who work with me or, um, have anything to do with me know that I coach on a lot of different levels, everything from, um, especially self-love, especially realizing your power as a person, um, everything from that to business to life to pleasure so this is really relevant um and i was talking to a, a, an incredible coach about this this morning he's actually a football coach um and we had a lot to share on this subject um this morning we were lucky enough to go in and spend some time with the sydney fc if anyone is into um soccer then they'll know who those guys are they're playing in um, Newcastle today when I'm doing this video and we're gonna go and watch them play the Jets should be a really awesome game anyway um, the difference between functional and uh, vital so vital when you think of the uh, definition of vital it basically means energy and vitality um, and it's almost like a life force thing. So when you think of someone that is vital, you think of someone who brings energy and someone who brings life force and um, vitality to the situation. So you'll know those people or maybe you're one of those people and it, whether you, it doesn't matter which you are, we're just gonna like delve into what, what the differences are and, um, and you can change where you fit on the spectrum. So a vital person is someone that in a work situation, they're the kind of people who are the go-getters. They're the, um, you know, they're, they've got the ideas, they're open to change, they're, they're the kind of people who are like, they're really open-minded, or maybe not necessarily open-minded, but they're, they're the like kick-ass people in a situation. Um, they're the ones that you're just like the leaders, right? And the functional people are those who are more tending to be the people who um, are just kind of doing. They're not necessarily thinking. They're not necessarily reaching for, for new stuff all the time. They're not the innovative. So these are people who um, tend to work well in a career situation. And there's no judgment on being in a career. But those who are vital these days with the internet age, um, tend to be those people who are making um, money from their own ideas and they're not necessarily tied to a nine to five. It doesn't mean that if you're tied to a nine to five that you're not a vital person because you definitely, most definitely can be. But um, in a career situation, a functional person will work really well because they will just get the job done um, and kind of follow, they're really good at following directions and um, and that sort of thing. So, I mean, I'm wondering like if you're hearing any of this, which which one of those people you think you are? Like just being, you know, open and, and realistic. Are you a vital person or are you a functional person? So the functional people uh, tend to, in more of a shadow state, move from a place of, Mm, I want to say a little bit of like things are happening to them. So it's kind of like, oh, um, you know, and, they, and they're worried more about the future. Like what does the future hold? Whereas a vital person will be like, yep, amazing. Like we can change our future. We can do this. We're, um, we can, we can mold things the way we want them. Whereas a functional person will be like, okay, shit is happening to us. How does that, like, does that affect me in the future? So it's, it's almost like more of, um, things are happening to them. So, um, if you, and, and the reason I wanted to, to really talk about this is because, um, I find that this is the same sort of thing can happen in a relationship or, um, you know, it, it's kind of, the, the difference between are you a go-getter in life or are you just kind of 
poking along and letting things happen to you. Maybe sometimes that happens in like, you know, the victim mentality can then can come around when you're moving from a functional place. So what else do I want to say about this? Um, I feel that if you are a functional person and you're just moving from a place of like, okay, I'm just going to follow what everyone else is doing. Uh, maybe you're not very innovative. Maybe you're uh, fearful living in a, in a place of more fear. Then you can change to a vital. You can change to be a person of vitality or, or the vital kind of person. Very definitely. And those who are in a vital place can also change to a functional place very, very quickly. Um, something may happen to them in life and then they're just like, oh shit, you know, it's put the, it's put the stoppers on me and I, I, now I can't even, you know, I'm frozen. Um, yeah. So I feel like most of my life, I have, most of my life, I have been one of those vital people. I've always been um, a leader in my field, um, whether it was what I used to do or what I do now. I've always been a person who is like, okay, shit's gone wrong. How do we fix it? All right. Open our minds. Like, um, you want to make more money? Think outside the box that you're in. You know, how, how can you change things? How can we swap things? You know, um, encouraging other people to break down their mind barriers of uh, where they're stuck at the moment. Whereas um, the functional people, I tend not to... I tend not to spend a lot of time with functional people because a lot of times they're just, they're just happening on a more of a a level of like, oh, this happened to me and uh, I'm now it's affecting me. And it's like, no, no, I want to be around more vital people. I want to be around more shape shifters and, and people who are really, you know, um, really changing or, or really a able to and open to changing their mindset around things. So I'm wondering if you're watching this, which one are you? Are you a uh, vital or are you a functional or do you feel like you, you know, shift between both? Um, in a relationship, I think that when you're a functional person in a relationship or when you're, when you're coming from a functional place in a relationship, you can really come across as being quite insecure or needy. Um, whereas when you're in a, when you're the vital person in a relationship and maybe you're both the vital person or three of you or however many are in the relationship, um, you are, you're constantly like, yes, positivity. And you know, how can we move, you know, that here comes a, uh, a, a hurdle, how can we move past that hurdle? We're having a, a problem in our relationship, how can we shift things? How can we change things to move past this? Whereas a functional person will be more like, oh my God, this has happened and now I don't know how it's going to affect me in the future. So I'm wondering, uh, maybe in your relationships, and this has happened to me, I'm very vital in my work. And then sometimes in, you know, at times I've been in a relationship and been from a really functional place of like, oh my God, you know, um, because when we talk about attachment styles, then it, attachment, there's like, um, there's three different attachment styles and my attachment style is an anxious attachment style. It doesn't mean I'm an anxious person. It just means that when shit's not going, um, when I don't feel safe in a relationship that I tend to have certain things that I do that show as an anxious attachment style. Um, so I can come across as being sometimes functional in a relationship if I'm not getting what I need. I'm like, oh, I'm worried about our future. I'm worried about um, this, I'm worried about that. And someone who maybe has an attachment style of, um, God, what is the other one? I've had a mind blank. Um, um, so you've got anxious, secure, and um, avoidant. So someone who's coming from an avoidant attachment style will just be like, uh, you're too needy, you're too this, you're too that. You know, they may not be the vital person either. They may just be functional as well and just, you know, getting along. But I'm trying to sort of intertwine these, these two concepts um, together of the attachment styles and also the, um, the vital and the functional person. But I, I, I want to kind of give that some context in a relationship. So, um, yeah, I'm just wondering if you can maybe check in in your life, in your, in your business or in your relationship with lovers or lover 
lovers or um, friends or family, where are you coming from? And I think also if I go back to family relationships, when you're a child um, in the family and you're around your parents, albeit grown, you're all grown as adults, um, what place are you coming from? Are you coming from a vital place or are you coming from a functional place? And that can also interpret back to child brain and adult brain. So what happens is when we're a child, we... Um, where children are quite victim mentality. Things are happening to me, and why is this happening, and I'm suffering, and it's all about me, 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 me. Um, and that's just the way that our child brain works, and that's okay. But when you become a grown adult and you're around your parents, um, <clears throat> you can still move from that child brain mentality, which becomes a functional state of being, which is still kind of like things are happening to me. You said something and it affected me, and why is this happening to me? Whereas the vital person or more of a parent brain um, would would be more the shapeshifter and the leader and someone who's who's um, you know being bring vitality and energy to the situation. So in that, you know, when you're around your parents or um, yeah, mainly you know in this situation, I'm going to keep it to parents and child. If you're like me and you're a grown adult and you're around your parents and you tend to go into like oh my god, like they might say something that triggers me and that's going to send me into child brain of victim mentality. Oh, they always do this and. Um, I would, I would say, how can you step from child brain or functional to vital or um, even a parent brain in that situation and go, hey, you know what? I'm a grown ass adult. I have control of my thoughts in this situation and how can I ask for what I need? How can I state to them, hey, I need more, um, you know, of this, I need more of your um, respect. I'm an adult. I don't need you to, you know, teach me or, or show me or judge me or, you know, whatever. I can do things for myself these days. Um, and maybe that happens not so much even with your parents. Maybe it's with um, other childhood friends that you were kind of had more of a leader and a follower role with when you were children. And, and now that you're both adults, maybe that's kept on. So, um, I know I've brought a lot of different concepts into this, into this video and it's been more of a, um, less of an interactive kind of space, I guess, but maybe just if you feel to, I think we can all check in with ourselves around, are we functioning or are we living from a place of vital, from vitality? So are you a vital person in this situation? You know, um, when you're around business colleagues, are you the person who comes up with all the ideas and innovations? And, um, you know, are you stepping into that leadership role or, um, or are you just functioning? And this is how people, this is why some people will go along, you know, in a career, some people will just stay in that one role forever and they'll be like, oh, you know, such a call, sorry, um, such and such moved up in like one year and I've been here for 20 years and I'm still in the same spot. That is because you're coming from a functional place, almost guaranteed, whereas that person entered your um, workplace in a vital place and they're a shapeshifter and they're someone who gets shit done and they have innovative ideas and, they, you know, those words just keep coming to to my mind, um, shape shifting and innovation with, you know, leading. And that's why they've gone up the rung and you haven't because you're not coming forth with that vitality to, to produce. So, um, and that's, you know, that's, that's on a, that's on a business level, which, um, funnily enough with the coaching that I do, and this is why, um, you know, sometimes I get asked to, to coach on a business side of things. Sometimes I get asked to coach around sexuality. Sometimes I get asked to coach, um, in more of just a life coaching state. And a lot of times it's uh, nutritional coaching. And, um, I mean, I love all of that, but the thing is it all interrelates back to the other. And, um, I love this because, um, yeah, Michelle, well done. Uh, I love this because it, it, it means that, you know, your, your vitality, if you're a vital person, then you can bring that into every area of your life. There's going to be places and times when you're functional in your child brain and that sort of thing. And that's okay. But, but being more of a vital, Hey baby, I won't be long being more of a vital, um, a vital 
adult brain is going to really help you get forward in life, in your relationships, in your love, in your sexuality. You know, relating back to sexuality, um, are you the person who just kind of shuts down and um, maybe especially as a woman, and I had a beautiful conversation um, with a friend yesterday about this of like, you know, why why are we as women acting as though we need to be, um, you know, for instance, when you meet a man, maybe it's a, maybe you've just met them for the first time and there's this incredible amount of attraction then, and I'm changing the direction of this, but I love it. It always ends up with sex anyway. Um, that's where we come from and that, there's no shame around that. So when you are with a man for the very first, um, you know, or, or, or you've met a man or a woman, now I'm going to come from a woman's side of things. When a woman meets a man, um, and um, it's maybe the very first time they've been together, but there's this incredible amount of attraction. Sweetheart, I won't be long. What's up, baby? Sure. Sorry, you guys. Um, when there's this incredible amount of attraction happening between the woman and the man, if it comes to a sexual um, situation, a lot of times the woman will not will, will go into function. Well, she she will go into a place of more things are happening to her, and she'll want to pull away from that because it's like, oh, I don't want to be seen as cheap. I don't want to be seen as giving things away too easily. But my thoughts on the matter are, if there is, um, and that is your head just, you know, doing backflips and being like, oh my God, will he judge me? Will he this? Will he tell his friends who will judge me? Who'll tell their, you know? Um, but what I would say as um, coming from a place of vitality in that situation is like, I'm a grown ass woman and my body, what is my body saying? My body is saying yes. If my body is saying fuck yes, then why wouldn't I take the power in this situation and say, this is what I want for myself. And rather than being more of the functional, this is happening to me and I don't want to be used. It's like, what do I want let my head go? What does my body want? And stepping into that from a place of power. Um, and that doesn't mean a way that you're taking away the other person's power. It just means that you're both being powerful. So maybe you can step into that and say, hey, you know, I just want to have a conversation right now to, to say to you, um, my brain is telling me no because um, it's saying that in the past I've given myself away too easily or I may have thought of myself as cheap or devalued myself or, you know, not realized my own worth and being able to say no when it was a, when my body was saying no. Um, so my brain is telling me no, but my body is telling me yes. So, you know, and you can have a conversation around that. So that's a place of vitality in that situation because you're taking the reins and you're, you're opening up and you're not having things happen to you. You are, you are, your body and your, your um, being is happening to, to the situation. So, um, I hope that gives a little bit of clarity around that. I know I've talked about so many different things. I've brought in, you know, attachment styles and I've brought in, you know, the difference between vital and, and functional humans. And I've brought in a little bit of sexuality and I've brought in a little bit of business, but, um, that is the way that I, you know, function in the world. Um, I think if you are being, thanks Talitha, I think if you are, this is an, another thing. I want to bring in one more thing. <laughs> it's kind of like a licorice all sorts today. If you are being successful or if you are feeling that one area of your life is lacking, um, whether that be like, I can't attract any money. Um, I'm really in a place of lack in my, in my money mindset. That will be insidiously um, attaching onto every part of your life. So that'll be, that'll be your sex life will be more of a victim mentality or like, um, you won't be clear and open in your sex. You won't be clear and open in your relationships. Somebody who is clear and open and able to really voice, um, and step into the world in that vital way will be doing that in every part of their life. So those people who have cleared their money blocks, Great, they're going to be able to speak freely and um, 
function from more of a, a vital place in their sexuality, in their relationships with friends, that sort of thing. But you notice if you have friendships where you're feeling used or you're like, oh God, I have no time for myself because I'm always doing things for other people. It's going to be the same in bed. You're going to be feeling like things are happening to you and you're not getting exactly what you want, but the other, you're, you know, you're pleasing the other person. It's going to be the same in your workplace. You're going to be like, oh, I don't have enough time to really get where I want to be in my work. Um, I'm just constantly having to fulfill fill roles of other people. So you see how um, when we work, so for instance, if you work with a coach to uh, maybe you'll work with a business coach, then that is going to, if you let it, it's going to lead back to every different area of your life. If you work with a sexuality coach, you know, those men um, and women that I work with around Tantra, we start to open up their their um, communication and their presence and their way of being in their body and the way that they experience life, then that leads back to a flow in every other situation of their life. So, you know, a lot of times that's why, um, you know, I'll have men who leave a tantra session and they'll just be like, my God, I was just walking down the street and every woman was looking at me. Um, and then I went for, a, you know, I went for a run and I've never run so fast in my life. And, you know, and then I made, you know, $10,000 extra this month. Like why? It's because when you clear um, blockages in one place of your life, you clear them in every place of your life. And in saying that, um, I want to talk, like, I want to just quickly talk about um, the programs that I run online because this is why, and um, yeah, this is why I like to work in a lot of different areas. And um, when people come to me, it's like they, they don't want to just work on one thing. Like, they might say, oh, you know, I just need some help with my nutrition. Yeah, great. But then when you really delve into it, yeah, nutrition's a problem because you're not um, you're not being able to be disciplined in your way that you're acting in life, which then goes back to your work. Are you disciplined and focused in your work? No, of course you're not. When you're lacking discipline and focus in one area of your life, you're lacking it in the other. If when you're lacking the ability to voice yourself in one area of your life, you're lacking it in every area of your life. Um, Talitha, yes, this has been happening to me lately. Yeah, of course, and it happens to all of us at some stage. Like I said, we we you know ebb and flow between the the vital and the functional, the parent brain, the child brain. Um, and I'll do a separate video some other time about the different attachment styles and how um, knowing your attachment style and knowing how to um, recognize other attachment styles is going to make such an incredible difference in your relationships. Um, whether you're already in a relationship or you're looking for a relationship, my God, such powerful stuff. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of all. All I want to all I want to um, talk about. If you would like to connect with me around coaching or around joining one of my online programs that um, that covers all of this stuff from everything from business to vitality to sexuality to self love. Um, send me an inbox or just uh, an email via my website, which is zoeswain.com. And um, apart from that, I hope you guys have the most amazing weekend. Like I said, our weekend has started off amazing by being able to um, spend the morning with other vital people. You know, I really think that's important to, to have my kids and myself uh, around other vital people, people who are leaders in their field, like the Sydney FC, they're the, you know, the, the best. Um, you know, those guys, their mindset and, um, you know, the way that they function in the world, they're super disciplined. They know what they're doing most minutes of the day because they're, they're focused on where they're going. And I love that about athletes and I love that about, you know, um, how we can take parts of that and put that into our own life. I think that's, that's something we can really learn. If you have other vital people in your life, surround yourself with those vital people. Um, those of you who are my besties, you're my vital people. You're my people that, um, that I, that I go to and I spend time around because you help me be more innovative. And so spend time with those vital people. If you are going to be spending time with functional people, I mean, great, but it's, it's, 
everyone knows that saying that, you know, we are the sum of the five people we spend the most time around. And that is the damn truth. I tell you a hundred percent. Um, you spend time with people who have problems with money mindset and a shutdown in their sexuality and are feeling like life is happening to them and you will eventually start buying into their stories and because as a, the tribe mentality would have us if we're not going to agree with the people around us and get into that same vibe or that same um, frequency as them they're going to kick us out so humans are a tribe mentality so oh my god i'm bringing so many different uh, things into this this morning so uh have an amazing weekend I really, really hope that you're all giving gratitude. I'm giving so much gratitude. I woke up this morning. I was like, damn, my life is so full right now. I have so much focus and so much vitality happening. And I'm just loving life right now. Um, and that's due to some changes that have, um, that have happened to me recently or that I've made happen to me recently due to me being in my functional brain and realizing and going, holy shit, I got it. I, I was in my functional brain there for a minute. How can I be back in my vital, in my vitality as a human being? Um, we have one life, one very, very short life, a hundred years. I mean, you won't even live to a hundred years, but if you live to like 60 or 80 or 90 years, that's just a blink in in you know the evolution of the universe so it's just not even a blink it's like a little bee flap of its wing and you're done so if you can um get the most like just get your life and just wring the most out of it that you possibly can you know go to that shit that you really want to go to and be around the people you really want to be around and um, I, I really can't stress that enough. So yeah, have an amazing weekend and, uh, I'll see you on the flip side.